Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth. On Now You Know. Sponsored this week by abetterrouteplanner.com. We have successfully completed our entire nine country trip in a Model 3 through Europe from Sweden, Denmark, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, France, Switzerland, Italy, and the UK using a better route planner. How was it? It was fantastic. Yeah. It was more accurate than the Tesla Navigator. Really? And we could find all of the chargers that weren't Tesla chargers. Really? So, I mean, that really helped you out in Europe. And we were in the car with Bo, who's busily programming new ideas into the into it as we're driving. It was so much fun. Right. Yeah, I want to do a super thank you to Bo and Tulbjorn for an amazing journey showing how easy it is to road trip in an electric car through Europe. All right, so Tesla's autonomy day was yesterday. We just uh, listened to it twice all the way through, took notes. We're going to go through it so you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. It was probably one of the most inspiring mind-blowing things and yeah. i thought going into it well i know what to expect but i don't know right. that I, I did i yeah i mean part of me sort of was like you know okay self-driving cars right of course you know we did our whole you know we did a right. whole series on self-driving cars and ride hailing and all that stuff so i was like yeah so i mean if you've watched our autonomous driving future um you know some of the amazing things that uh you know fully self-driving cars are going to allow us to do in terms of, you know, parking lots and uh, health and uh, how many cars need to be on the road and how much money we need to spend on cars in general. Very eye-opening, and I encourage you to go check out that series after we talk a little bit about this. But this, you know, autonomy day um, was... I don't know. It brought it to a whole other level. Yeah. I mean, so we're going to go through, basically, there's uh, three presentations that took place the hardware the neural network and then the software mm -hmm. and then elon wrapped it up yep. with some questions and answers so let's just let's just jump right in mm -hmm. so the first section was uh, by Bannon, who is the chief chip designer talked all about how the chip was designed and we'll go through just a few cool points about the chips because it really is amazing that tesla is a company that now makes their own chips. neural network chip right um this this board is basically more powerful than any other out there. So they started in 2016, February 2016, and Bannon basically decided to work for Tesla when Elon said that he would back it and that he would back doing it right. And I guess that's all it took for him to go on. So uh, they spent 18 months designing the chip. In August of 2017, they released it for manufacturing. In July of 2018, they went into full production. September of 2018, they went into testing. And then March of 2019, so just a couple months ago, uh, they put it into the Model S and X. And then on April 12th or thereabouts of this year, they started putting it into the Model 3. So if your Model 3 was built after April 12th, you've already got it. So every car that's being made right now has hardware 3. So this took just like three years, basically, from you know design to integration into the cars. That's astounding for yeah. anything like this. Let's talk about some of the goals that they were looking for for this chip. Okay. Um, they wanted it to uh, require less than 100 watts. Okay. Now, why, why is that important? So, I mean, uh, if you're driving along in a Model 3, you're using about 240 watt hours per mile. Okay. Oh, so 100 watts is a lot of power. I mean, right. normally I don't think that's like an old fashioned light bulb, mm -hmm. but for an electric car, that would be a lot of power. To so, use. I mean, if you were traveling one mile an hour, this would add, uh, it would make your car a lot less efficient. Luckily, the cars travel a lot faster than that. Wait, so if you're traveling in the city mm -hmm. driving, you're, you're actually- You're not moving as fast. And so the, the computer has to be thinking all the time. It can't just, you know, kind of stop thinking. So um, when you're on the highway, it's actually more efficient to have this, uh, any self-driving computer, because the computer needs to be chugging along at whatever wattage oh. it, it is. So let's say it's 100 watts. Um, you're going, say, 60 miles an hour. Um, you're going to be using a lot less computing wattage um, for every mile, whereas if you're only going one mile an hour, you'd be using 100 watts per mile so, just to think. So that's why Elon said it was so important to get this power consumption down because uh, ultimately these robo taxis are mm -hmm. going to be used primarily in urban environments where they're driving slower. Right. And so, I mean, yeah, that's just one of the goals. Right. Um, they wanted a lower part cost. They wanted 50 TOPS, which is trillion operations per second. They wanted a batch size of one. Yeah. So, I mean, instead of a normal computer, uh, it ca calculates something, stores that 
uh, answer waits for a whole bunch more to come through, usually 256 things, mm -hmm. and then it sends that off to be processed. This is different than like a video game, mm -hmm. right? Where where you could wait a few milliseconds, um, no one's gonna die. This is a car, so when it gets an image, it wants to process that image immediately and send it off to be you know, right or left on the steering wheel. Right. So it's a batch of one. Interesting. So no other real computers do that anymore. And yep. so they basically just wanted to design this specifically for neural net processing. Right. Another thing is they wanted to have a modest GPU. So a lot of uh, neural nets are run on GPUs because they're very powerful um, and, so, and GPU is a graphic processing right. unit, right? And that's basically an NVIDIA card. Right. And basically, for the longest time, these were the most powerful things because it's one of the most powerful things you need to ask a computer to do, right, is to render graphics. You know, oh, I want to see, uh, you know, Halo on a computer. And it's like, okay, well, I need to, you know, draw the, the this and I need to draw that tree right. and this bush. And that, that took a lot of, of power. Well, and so a lot of energy got put into making these uh, high-powered chips. Um, well, and, and the funny thing is, one of the reasons why NVIDIA has done so well is because when Bitcoin and all those uh, blockchain um, coins came out, they used GPUs, which were plentiful because of gaming. Because it's so powerful. Right, so powerful. But also they it kind of self-fed that industry, right? They right. started becoming even more popular because they're very powerful processors. Right. And so along comes Elon and says, you know what? No, let's not go that route. Because in order to do neural net, which is exactly what this you know, computer needs to do, in order to use a GPU for that, you'd need to just pour tons and tons and tons of GPU power right. um, towards it. Whereas they went for a ground up neural network chip. Yeah. In 2016, there were no ground up neural network chips. Right. Um, so they set out to make just a native neural net chip. Yeah, and so the other goal was that they wanted it to be redundant, so mm -hmm. that if one part of the chip failed, it wouldn't crash your car. Right. So both the chips receive all the video and process it independently. So um, basically they get video in from the from the cameras, they compare it, and if the answers match, then the car goes on and does whatever it said to do. If they don't match, it doesn't act. So here is the chip. It's uh, a 37.5 millimeter chip, so it's awfully small. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got six billion transistors. Um, it can do 2.5 billion pixels per second, 68 gigabytes per second peak bandwidth. And so get this, each of the two processors can handle 72 trillion operations per second total. But you said the goal was 50. The goal was 50, but both of the each of the chips can get 72 trillion i know it really is incredible yeah um and it's got um a video encoder on it so that it can handle the dash cam mm -hmm. the clip logging and the backup cam um and it's got a safety system so two cpus double check all the math and both have to be correct mm -hmm. before any action takes place and it's got a security CPU. So it will only run if there's Tesla software running. So if mm -hmm. anyone tries to hack it, it won't run. Uh, it can handle 2100 frames of video per second. That's insane. That's without I mean, any compression. And that's thinking. Like that is, you know, taking all that data in and then thinking about it, you know, that's 2100 times a second. Yeah. Is it looking at the world and thinking about it. I mean, your eyes, you know, yes, you're getting this continuous stream of, there's no frames or, as such, um, but you can really only handle a frame rate of around, you know, 24 or 30. That's why you're watching this as at 30 frames right. per second. Um, because, uh, you know, if it, if it wasn't enough data, it would look kind of weird. It would be like, no, that's a really good point. I mean, 30 frames per second gives you some reference. The fact right. that it can do eight cameras, 2100 frames per second, that's more than enough to do way better than a human can do. Right. I mean, that's crazy because, yeah. I mean, if you, you can't even imagine and that's 21 full, frames that's per second. That's full resolution. Like, right. we see things in blurs. This is seeing right. each frame of, you know. Like, right. Yeah. Keep in mind now that, yeah, it has full resolution, a hundred, you know, 360 degrees around the car. Yeah. You can only look at like a particular point. It's actually the size of your thumbnail. If yeah. you hold out your thumb, that is where all the detail of your vision is. Yeah. Because everything around that thumb is just blurry color. It's and pretty blurry. Yeah. Your brain is basically faking everything else right. because in order to fit all this amazing you know, vision into your eyeball, mm -hmm. um, it has to stick it in the back. And in fact, there's a, there are blind spots on both of your eyeballs yep. where you don't see anything, mm -hmm. but your brain just says it's fine. Right. You're seeing things. Exactly. This car doesn't have any blind spots. No. 
and it's thinking about it 2100 times a second. And what's really cool is a neural network accelerator gets rid of data as you process it. So there's no need to store it. I kind of thought there had to be hard drives that mm -hmm. like filled up. No. As it's processing, it throws away the data until it just gets to a decision. Right, and that saves a lot of power, so it is down to 72 watts. So their goal is 100 watts, and they beat it by over 25%. Right. That's, that's, that's amazing. Amazing. It and is, it's it's cheaper than the 2.5 full self-driving computer. Right. So yes. that's amazing. Um, get this, it's 21 times more powerful than the 2.5 computer. 21 times. 21 times better than what they did before. So in summary, it can do 144 trillion operations per second. Right. That's crazy. It is super crazy. So then uh, there was a question from the audience mm -hmm. after this where uh, Trip Chowdhury, who's a really cool analyst, he asked, well, are you working on like new designs? And Elon was like, yeah, actually, we're halfway through the design of the next generation chip right now. So hold your horses like right. this hardware three is phenomenal but in about two years they're going to have something that is about three times more powerful right they're going to have hardware four which will be three times as powerful yeah, so, as, as hardware version three right. which is 21 times more powerful than hardware version 2.5 right it's just insane so i mean from a company point of view right. think about this it's like you have nvidia built into your company you, right. like you have a chip designing company and this is the well, first time they ever did it and i mean nvidia's best chip has 21 trillion operations per second so tesla is beating them by a factor of seven all right well then how is nvidia going to stay in business well the whole reason that they're able to actually do this is that the card is designed for one thing and one thing only and that is self-driving oh i see. so this you know you can't be necessarily mining bitcoin or right. you know rendering graphics necessarily. it's just made for it's, this it's made for neural network understanding of the world around it and then translating that into what the car should do i wonder how many people are going to want to rip this card out of the computer and start using it for other neural network uses yeah i mean can you imagine i know <laughs> like if it's able to get this just amazing performance yeah. um, with only 72 watts i mean it's yeah. not a ton of power. No, it's, it's low. It's um, insane. And so, again, LiDAR came up as a question. Mm -hmm. Elon said, LiDAR is a fool's errand. Anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. It's like having expensive appendices. Uh, you know, it's like having extra arms. If you don't need them, it's a waste of resources. Mm. And he said, you'll see. Mm. So uh, we, we'll hear more about that in a few minutes. Oh, and then another interesting point. Uh, Elon said, if someone started today to work on this, mm -hmm. it would take them about three years. And that's if they were awesome at it, like Tesla right. was. He, he said, like, that's if they were the best. Right. And so that would, in three years, get them to where Tesla is today. And yet we just mentioned in two years from today, Tesla will have something three times better than what they have today. Right. So... Um, basically, Tesla is super far ahead on this, and we're going to be touching back on that point quite a few and more times. And this is just the hardware. Right. Elon said that a year from now, Tesla should have about a million cars with full self-driving, um, and that that will give them a massive data advantage. Because just like Google, um, when you go into Google and you type in a search, you're actually programming Google with your queries. Right, you're you're helping. helping Google. Yeah, and so that's what you're doing when you drive a Tesla. You're helping Tesla with your data. Right. Um, and so the question came up about simulations. The question is Waymo um, and other companies like that are using simulations as opposed to real life data. And they claim that it's better because they can do bazillions of simulations without having to drive anything anywhere. Right. And Elon answered that basically, if you could simulate the real world perfectly, that would be great. But his argument is there are so many edge cases in the real world that you can't program into a simulation because if you could put them in the simulation to begin with, you wouldn't need the simulation. Right. I mean, th the first point is, is moot because if you, again, if you could simulate the real world perfectly, don't worry about driving self-driving cars, you've just created the matrix. Right. And that is why they're actually relying on the real world because the real world is crazy. Yeah. It's Sometimes you have tanks driving across the road, um, but basically Ooh. these are things that are edge cases way outside the scope of what you'd normally consider normal while you were driving. Next up was Andre Karpathy. He's the senior director of AI at Tesla. And they started talking about the PhD that he has from Stanford and Elon like cut the introductory guy off and said, look, PhDs don't matter. This guy is super smart. He started 
teaching neural networks at Stanford. Uh, first to a class of about 150. Now they're up to like 700 students. Right. He, he wrote the, whole, the curriculum. Exactly. Yeah. He's the guy. Um, and so he, his team is in charge of training neural networks. Now, for the longest time, I've had the hardest time wrapping my head around neural networks. And mm -hmm. I think for the first time today, I finally began to understand it. There's software, which you're going to hear about next, and there's neural networks. Neural networks are basically training a computer to do what you and I can do easily, right? In this example, Andre was talking about looking at an iguana and knowing what it is. Look, you can look at this picture of an iguana in many different you know, habitats, colors, whatever, and you'll pick it out as an iguana. Right. And I can hold up an object and you can quickly realize, oh, that's a mug. Right. Excellent. Perfect. Put it down. And, you know, it uh, doesn't matter what it is. Sharpie, you know, your, your right. brain picks up what it is very quickly. Um, but a neural net needs a lot of training on what it is. I think that uh, Andre did a really good job of explaining it. Uh, he showed a particular breed of dog, a Japanese spaniel. He showed one picture of it and then he showed uh, six other pictures three of which were uh, Japanese Spaniels, and you, as a human, were able to be like, oh, I, I see the ones which I think yeah, and are that, Spaniels. That was after just seeing one picture of a Japanese right. Spaniel. But a neural computer net... Can't, a computer can't do that. Right. Um, and so it needs to be trained. And so a neural net is a way of training a computer fast. It basically, you give it some labeled information, and then you keep training it until it gets really good at picking that out. Just another example, for instance, we all know what a bike is, we all know what a car is, but Andre was pointing out the fact that sometimes you put a bike on a car. Right. Well, you and I as humans know what that is. That's a bike being carried by a car. He was saying he had to train the computer to now think of that as just a car. You don't want it to think of it as a bike in a car because that would throw everything off, mm -hmm. right? So you again have to go through and find real world examples. Where do you get those examples? You ask the fleet. Basically, you go into the Tesla fleet and you go, give me examples of bikes on cars so I can train the neural net. Right. Now, he's talking about the fact that a lot of times you take uh, pictures and you have a human annotate that picture. You say, okay, well, I'll draw on this picture where the lines are. I will circle the humans, all that. And Because it's hard to know what is right. I mean, if you're yeah. training a computer to do something, you actually have to train it. You can't just right. be like, computer this is a road and these are the lines and you follow them and it goes, okay, I understand. It doesn't get that. You so, need to give it many examples and you need to show where the lines are. Yeah, and that's expensive, right? right? It takes time and energy and money for humans to do that. So he was talking about the fact that now they have another way to do that, which is basically they can label things automatically by running in shadow mode so that they can make predictions and they can see what is mispredicted without hurting anybody. So for instance, they can train it to do something see how it works in the real world, keep tweaking the training until it gets it right. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then Elon told us that uh, everyone is training the network at all times, even when AP is off. I kind of thought when you're driving your Tesla without autopilot that it wasn't learning anything. He basically was telling us, no, we're collecting data all the time. Right. And the interesting thing is, you know, you might be thinking, okay, they're just getting like a bunch of camera data from your car. And so all they have to go on is basically like dash cam footage of what's going on. Well, no, they actually know what your steering wheel is doing, yes. what your pedals are doing. Yes. Um, they know all, and, and as well as inertial and GPS data. So they can actually look at a street, see where you were driving on that street, um, look at the, you know, when you were accelerating, when you were braking, mm -hmm. when you were steering, they can look at into why you were steering uh, away from something. Um, all of that gets into the neural net and trains the neural net. So it's not like your computer is the only neural net right. uh, for itself. They're all talking to each other and yeah. they're all creating this very powerful neural net which can understand things that are going on, crazy things that probably you might not even encounter on the road. For instance, path prediction. Um, so we just found out from this talk that about five months ago they programmed that into the car. So things that your car couldn't do, like clover leaves, mm -hmm. uh, starting about five months ago, it could start to do. And that means that even when your car is on a road that you've never been on before, and have you've never seen before the car can predict what the path will be even for things you can't see coming up around the bend right so it's actually able to predict um curves beyond where it can see which is astounding because i mean that is sort of how we drive yeah. is you have to kind of predict when you're going around a corner with with you know no visibility you have to be like well i think it's probably going to keep 
uh, you know, turning. Right. And then he was saying that they can actually figure out who are the better drivers so that they can get the information from better drivers versus worse. Because I was thinking this, um, if, if a bad driver is driving along, you probably don't want their data. Right. Very important point. Hard to explain this, but I think he did a good job. He was saying that visual recognition is necessary for autonomy. So when you see someone walking down the street looking at their phone, you know that that person is probably not paying attention and could wander out into the street. With LIDAR, that person would look like a bunch of points. And it would know exactly where that person was and distance and all that. And how fast they were moving. But it wouldn't know that that person's holding a phone. Right. With visual recognition, you could then program and say, be extra careful of that person because they could wander into your lane. Or, for instance, you're driving along and you see a construction sign. LIDAR can tell you there's a sign there. Right. But it can't tell you what it says. Right. And so that is why the cameras are so important. And, I mean, uh, one of the things that I think was very smart was that they said you know uh the driving world is designed for humans and and your eyes right the signs on the road they are not you know transmitting signals to your car right they're they just have a thing that someone painted on them that says you know this is the speed limit and your your car being able to actually see the signs is going to be able to understand everything and you don't need to have lidar because i mean right now when you're driving along You don't have it. You don't have it. And he was saying that LiDAR is a shortcut. It's a false sense of progress. Mm -hmm. So basically, Waymo and all these other companies, yes, they think they've got it because LiDAR is like, oh, we have all this information. But they're not going to have it when they hit an edge case. You know, if you're driving along and you see and you're using LiDAR and you see a bump on the road... Is it a bump on the road? Is it a tire? Or is it a plastic bag? Exactly. You know, so having vision, the vision is going to be able to identify that as a plastic bag, realize that it's not a threat, that it can drive over it, or say that that's a tire. Right. I should avoid that. That is road debris that needs to be avoided. Or it'll say, you know, that's just the way that the road is, is going. Yeah. And I mean, um, it's all about this long tail, this Mm -hmm. 99.99999%. And if basically, we've been talking about this, chasing some of the last few nines is hard. Mm -hmm. But the rate of progress is proportional to the data from the wild that you receive. So what does that mean, data from the wild? So that basically means that the more cars you have on the road and the more miles that you have collecting data, um, the more of these crazy edge cases you're going to find. So, you know, cars flipping over on the highway way you know you wouldn't want your car to see the car flipping over on the highway and go okay i'll just follow that at a safe distance right you know you'd want it to like slow down stop and uh you know avoid. or avoid and then maybe you know go around or maybe stop and tell you to get out and help somebody right. and so the more cars you have the more experiences you're going to have with you know deer and moose on the road it's going to be able to train the neural net and um, have cases that they're able to actually look at and design software for to decide what to do. The question came about changing lanes, especially in L.A., where when you try and change lanes, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Some people are like, you know, Mad Max and won't let you in. And Elon said, basically, very soon they're going to have a slider that you'll be able to decide, like, how much more aggressive. In fact, they, they'll call it L.A. traffic mode, he jokingly right. said. Right, it'll be above Mad Max in terms right. of uh, lane change aggressiveness. Um, and I think that that's perfect because, yeah, there are different drivers who want different uh, behaviors for their car. And so when you're driving along, you might be taking lanes and you might be like, OK, I'm driving in L.A. I need to, you know, butt my nose in and and get in here. Um, whereas, you know, if you were to design a, a car that would nicely take lanes, it might not work in all scenarios. Right. Now, there's a good question here that shows how little people understand how the system works. And the question was about, you know, what if what if my car's not connected to the network? Will it then not be able to drive? And, and Elon said, no, that's not how it works. Mm-hmm. Basically, your car is giving data to, to Tesla all the time, but your car can be con- disconnected and it works it, perfectly. Right. The it's, neural net is in the car. Right. And it gets updated from Tesla. Right. Um, so... The more, you know, the longer you're connected to Tesla, the more they're able to, you know, send updates and make your driving experience better. But basically, when you have an update, so, you know, 8.4, that's how smart your car is right now. Mm -hmm. Until you get the next update, 
your car's not getting any smarter. Right. And they're able to do different things in shadow mode and try stuff out in shadow mode where it doesn't affect the way that the car drives. Right. Um, but that's a way that they're able to actually test some stuff out. Right. Um, and then they give you the update and you're good to go from there. Another question came in about LiDAR asking, well, can't you just pop it on there and use it as like a redundant thing? And Elon again said, everyone who's using LiDAR now is going to dump it eventually. He said, I'm not against LiDAR. In fact, he pointed out that with SpaceX, they use LiDAR to dock the Dragon uh, with the ISS. And in fact, Elon spearheaded that initiative because he said in that case, it makes a lot of sense. Right. But in cars, it's friggin' stupid, unquote. Right. Let's just talk about, you know, docking the Dragon to the ISS. Um, that already involved you launching a rocket into space, um, getting it within rendezvous distance, getting it pretty much lined up with the docking port. Um, and then you're using LiDAR to just make sure that your fine adjustments are all set. They didn't rely on LiDAR to launch the whole thing into space. No. It's just the docking part, right. right? And for that application, it's very smart to use LiDAR, which and, is and, the whole point. And the other thing is, you know, no deer is going to cross in front of exactly. it. Exactly. You're in space. There's right. literally nothing around you for right. like a mile. You're just using it to get accurate distance. That's right. Right, exactly right. Someone brought up a really good point here, which I don't even think Elon had thought of mm -hmm. yet. Um, they said, well... Isn't this like you have a bunch of free data centers for Tesla? You have, you know, 425,000 cars right now with HD2 and, a, and beyond. Are you going to do anything with that? And Elon was like, hmm, yeah, you're right. We could kind of do like an AWS like Amazon does. Like mm -hmm. we could have, we could use these data centers for something. I think he's so focused right now on fully self-driving that he's not thinking of the fact that he has these powerful computers on wheels that he has complete access to to do whatever else he wants to do with them. And for the most part, are sitting around for 90% of the time. Exactly. Right? They're not being used for self-driving 100% of the time. So, I mean, so, what, what if eventually you could, or Tesla could, use these computers to do other problem solvings? You right, know, like, other neural network tasks. Yeah. Question came up about snow and GPS, and I thought this was really interesting. Um, people were saying, hey, why don't you use HD maps or GPS to, to figure out where roads are, especially when it's snowing? And and Elon said, well, actually, we went down that road. Um, we, we tried out high-density maps, and we learned that it doesn't work. Um, you should not rely on on maps first. They should be a backup to your vision, but never the the primary thing that you rely and, on. And it's not even a backup. I mean, it's just sort of a suggestion. Right. Um, it's just sort and, of And like, why, why shouldn't you rely on them? Um, because basically, uh, GPS can be wrong yeah um if there's a, a small gps error um you know we're you're talking, now in a ditch right exactly and so they're very primarily relying on you know you wouldn't just you know the model 3 has a very well updated uh gps it's very fast you know it, it follows you very well you wouldn't just look you know sit there looking at your your gps <laughs> right to drive the car right that would be and, super dangerous. But you know, a bunch of other car manufacturers are going down that road right, right. now. They're actually uh, trying to make GPS the main system that their AP uses. Right, and 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 mapped out regions where you'd hire someone to go drive it and map out. You know, okay, here's where all the things are. But here's the problem: construction site. Right. As soon as something changes, right. the car is now lost. Right. It it um, it, it sort of reminds me. There's this very old uh, thing that I saw. It it was. Uh, You'd have directions on tape. And oh, yeah. And a thing in the car. In the 70s. And it would basically, uh, it would count the revolutions of your wheel to yep. know how far you've gone. And then it would talk the directions to you. And then it would talk the directions to you. So it was like an early GPS system. But the problem was, if you took a wrong turn <laughs> or, there the was, or there was a detour, <laughs> completely messed up. Because it was just basing off distance. It would right. be like, you know... You drive for a certain period of time, they'd be like, exactly. in 300 feet, take a left. And then you'd take the left, and then it would be, in 400 feet, take a right. And then you'd take a right. And three, you know, and if you missed it, then it would just be off the entire time. And that's exactly the problem with these uh, GPS maps. Now, we're only on the second speaker here, and you can tell that Elon's already getting a little uh, bored. Mm. So he lets loose basically one of his big points early in the mm. talk. So he says here, you know what? We're going to be feature complete with this autopilot this year. And by the second quarter of next year, uh, the driver won't even have to pay attention. They can go to sleep. And at the end of next year, we should start getting regulatory approval. And everyone was like, Wait, what did you just say? Right. Now, let's just keep in mind that uh, his timelines are not necessarily always 100% accurate. Right. However, the things that uh, they set out to do happen. Right. 
And we'll get to that in a second. Mm. So the last speaker gets up. Um, this is Stuart. He's the head of software. He's uh, spent 12 years writing code. He worked for Facebook and Snap. Um, he pointed out that Tesla now has 70 plus million miles of drive on nav data. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And get this. He was talking about how um, they have a next generation auto braking system that is going to go out to all of us to the fleet next quarter. Mm -hmm. What this will do is, right now it's running in shadow mode, but what it will do is right now your um, braking system sees something that's in front of your car and brakes, right? right. Like Great, a, that's Like perfect. a deer. Right, exactly. Well, brakes. coming soon, it's gonna see something like a deer and predict that it's going to go in front of your car and break before the deer gets in front of your car. So it's it's gonna be, there's gonna be a running deer off to the side and, it's and gonna instead of waiting for it to be directly in front of you, to be like, there is an object in front of you, break, it's going to go, I think that that object's going to be in front of you, I'm going to break early. Exactly. Wow. Like like you as a human would. Right. If you saw the deer. Which right. Which most of the times you don't. And it'll be able to do this, let's say, a T-bone, right? Mm -hmm. So you're driving through an intersection, someone doesn't stop at a red light, that's the worst situation probably ever. Mm -hmm. Well, you have cameras all around the, the car now, so now it's going to say, oh, that car's going way too fast, it's not stopping, I should stop. Right. That could be a game changer. Right. And then that is just for automatic emergency braking. Right. So that's that, for when you are driving the car. Right. But obviously self-driving will already, it won't even like be worried about it. Right. It won't have to slam on the brakes because it'll see it coming. All right. So they have an early access program that's available to about 2,000 Tesla owners um, where they can try different things out in a controlled deployment, which is pretty cool. And then he went on to talk about the 9 million successful lane changes that they've had using confirmed turning. So basically you're driving along, it says, I think you should change lanes. You confirm it by hitting your stock and everything goes smoothly. They've had 9 million of those. So now get this, they've had 100,000 automated lane changes every day. And they're getting faster and faster to improve the algorithms because basically as you get better at doing lane changes, um, it then becomes even easier to improve it. And then Elon pointed out that all of the lane changes happened with zero accidents. Wrap your head around that for right. a second, folks. 100,000 lane changes every day. Not one of them was an accident. Right. And, and that is with Autopilot 2.5. Yeah. That is not with Autopilot 3. So, I mean, it's only going to get... I mean, how do you get better from zero accidents? Um, that is super important. I, I think that that is something that, you know, people might just sort of gloss over. Imagine for a moment if... There were accidents. If yeah, you let's put, say if every you, day, right, one of those hundred thousand lane changes turned into an accident. Right, that would mean that every day there would be an accident r regarding this, and it would happen. It would be in the news. People right. would start talking about it. It'd be like, oh my gosh, you hear Tesla cars are actually getting people into accidents. You, we're not hearing that. That right. that story does not happen. It's very right. very rare that um, a Tesla gets into an accident, and we're like, it definitely was an autopilot. Right. Very, very rarely do we ever hear stories like that. I know. If they did this poorly, there's a hundred thousand automated lane changes every day. If they implemented this poorly, you'd hear about it. You would hear about it. It would be all over the news. Tesla would be like the laughing stock of town, and they're not. Right. That didn't happen. They have been implementing this super well. So if anyone was like, I think this this is all a bunch of malarkey. This is just a bunch of numbers on a page, and no one ever. This is true. This actually this happened. Yeah. That's the proof. Yeah. So Elon was talking about the redundancy of these self-driving cars and the robo cars mm -hmm. as he started using the term. Um, since 2016, they have redundant motors in the power steering. They, you can cut any data or power line in the car and the car will still drive. You can even um, have a problem with your main battery pack and the auxiliary power system will allow you to you know, drive safely to a stop. Right. Now, this has all been designed to be a robo-taxi since October of 2016. That's insane. This is a lot of foresight. I mean, back in 2016, we were we were talking about like- The Model X. Maybe, yeah, and maybe the Model 3. What would the Model 3 right. look like? What would the specs on the Model 3 be? Well, let's go to this. He showed the master plan, right? 2008, the Roadster did it. More than the more affordable car, the 2012 Model S, which he pointed out, by the way, seven years later, Still, no car can compete with the 2012 Model S. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. Can, I mean, let's just stop and think about that yeah. for a second. I Name mean, a car. Try and think of a car other than a Tesla right. that can compete with the 2012 Model S. Right. 
uh, they're they're just starting to come out now. It's been seven years. Yeah. Then was the highly affordable car, which he argued maybe it wasn't highly affordable, but it is affordable. The Model Three, right? Uh, hit Model Three production of over five thousand a week. Done. Large scale solar. Done. Deploy the solar roof. Well, they're on the version three. I don't know if they've actually deployed I wouldn't it, count it, but I wouldn't count it personally. But yes, but, but they're working. They're on working it. on it. Uh, deploy the battery projects. Yes, they've been doing they've that. They've been doing yeah. that. Um, and he said, sometimes I'm not on time, but we get it done. I said we'd do them. We did it. So now the 2019 goal, he said, is to reach S3 and X production of 10,000 per week, be feature complete self-driving. So wait, what? Right. This year? <laughs> yes. Feature complete. That doesn't mean that it's going to be in the cars. Nope. It just means that they are going to have it feature complete. And then it's going to be time for regulators to and, look at it. And self-driving does not mean level two self-driving. What no. he said was that you would be able to not look out the window. So he meant level five. Then he said 2020, the plan is to expand EV production line to the Model Y and the semi-truck. Okay. And to enable robo-taxi. He pointed out that enabling it means doing what? It's an over-the-air update. Basically, yeah. he said, I love his quote, the fleet wakes up with an over-the-air update. The fleet wakes up. I mean, how crazy is that? One day, just boom, all the cars. Yeah. I mean, because you might be thinking, okay, they're going to start coming out with cars that can be robo-taxis. No, they're driving around. I'm driving a car and that could be a robo-taxi tomorrow. And a robo-taxi means that there's no one needed to be in it. Right. It, it doesn't need a driver, so you can call it to you or have it bring a package to you with no one in the car. And he From said the anywhere. only thing that'll be needed in 2020 would be the pending regulatory approval. So he can't he can't guarantee what the government will do, but right. he says the cars will be ready in 2020. Okay, so he says that any customer can add or subtract your car to the Tesla network, just like you can to say Uber or Airbnb, right? If you have a house, you can go on the app and say, I want my house to be available on Airbnb. Right. He said you can do that with the, with the car and that Tesla would get a 25 to 30% commission. So he's given us some numbers to go by here. Yeah. This is adding up to be pretty big stuff. Yes. So um, this would be a ride sharing app that would basically be the Tesla app, he said, with some new features added to it. So you could either summon a car from it, like you do in Uber today, or you could add your car to the fleet with right. it. So I just want you to picture what this means. You drove your car to work, your Model 3. It's uh, 8.30. Mm -hmm. You go on your app and you say, oh, I'm at work. I don't need the car again until 5. So right. uh, go, Great. Model 3. You're, you're now on the Tesla you're network. You're on the Tesla network. I'm walking down the street, let's say, a few miles away, and I need a car, and I go on the Tesla network, and I say, oh, uh, there's a car. Boom. And it comes, picks me up. Right. That's what we're talking about. And, and then you're at work, right? You're earning money at work. And then your your app probably goes off. It goes, bzz, bzz. hey, you just earned, you know, 25 bucks driving right. some guy to the airport. And you're right. like, sweet. Yep. Awesome. I didn't have to do any work. Right. And now, and now my car just drives back to me. So you show this graph here that shows that every week the average car is used from 10 to 12 hours, right? Drives you to work, drives right. you home. During the whole week, the 10 to 12 hours. Right. Because as we pointed out, most cars sit around for 90, 95% of the time not being used. Mm -hmm. He said you could easily operate a car for 55 to 60 hours a week, which would increase the utility by a factor of five. Right. That's a massive increase in the economic efficiency. That's amazing. You've just turned a car that usually spends its time sitting in a parking lot to now spending at least half its time being a usable thing. This also shows the importance of the Model 3 lease program. Yes. So they just came out with the lease program as we talked about a week or so ago. Basically, you can lease the Model 3 and then at the end of your lease, you can't buy it because yeah. Tesla will take it. Yeah. So basically what Elon's doing here is he's having customers fund Tesla. Right. Ba fund this network. So basically now Tesla owns that car and they can put that car in a place that doesn't necessarily have a lot of Tesla owners right. to run the network. Elon pointed out here that the current cost uh, is $38,000 mm -hmm. um, and that they're coming out with a new battery pack next year, which will have a million miles of longevity. Right. And Today it's about 300000 to 500000 which is still nothing to shake a stick at. And is replaceable. And is replaceable. But I mean... He said basically that the car is designed for a million miles of use. Right. So this is amazing if you were to buy a Model 3 because most cars you're lucky to get 100,000 miles out of before they need, you know, right. pretty severe maintenance. Right. A million mile life out of a car is something that you really only get out of trucks, right. as, as he was talking about. A, a semi-truck. Huge commercial right. semi-trucks are designed for a million 
thousands of miles. Now, he pointed out something else, which you had a really good point about. Uh, right now, their motor efficiency is about 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour of motor efficiency. Right. And he said they'll be able to improve that to five miles and beyond. Now, how can they do that? I'm thinking it's partially due to, to battery technology, but also probably uh, super capacitors from yeah. Maxwell. I think that that yep. is going to enable um, just a little bit more efficiency in the drive, especially stop and go. And way um, better cycle life. And yeah, way better cycle life for the batteries themselves. And he went on to talk about that at some point they'll just delete the steering wheel and the pedals. That Not just at some point. He said two years from now, we'll make cars with no steering wheel or pedals. Three years from now, robo taxis will cost $25,000 or less. Right, because I mean, you actually have to factor in the cost of a steering wheel and the pedals um, and all of the stuff, all of the control systems that go into those uh, things. And once you don't need them anymore because the cars drive themselves, um, those costs are gone. So let's talk about what I think is maybe the most important point mm -hmm. of this entire thing. He said that Tesla has full integration. They make the cars, they make the software, they make the hardware, basically, Think about this. It's going to be nearly impossible to catch up to Tesla. Right. They are going to become the Uber slash car manufacturer, basically the transportation solution of the future. The There's, Amazon of transportation. Yeah. I mean, perhaps. just like it's almost impossible now for anyone to catch up to Amazon, mm. it's going to be impossible. I think already is impossible for anyone to catch up to Tesla. Because, I mean, let's just think about this. Let's say Uber tomorrow was like, okay, we, we need to do what Tesla's doing. Uh, GM, we want to buy 100,000 of your cars. Okay, GM's going to be like, sure, you'll buy 100,000 of my cars and I will mark up the, the cost to, to GM. I'll mark it up and I'll make a big profit. Right. And so then Uber is going to have to eat that profit margin that they had to buy from GM, which means that now they're not necessarily going to be, you know, they, they won't be able to make as much profit because well, they've and, already lost that profit margin. And Uber needs uh, drivers. Well, yes. I mean, it, I mean, that, whereas... they would need to develop this technology before Tesla gets it out, which is. It's, it's too late. It's too late. It, no one's been working on it right. except for Tesla. And so uh, Elon went on to point out what the cost of a gas car is today, right? At 62 cents a mile, it's $2 trillion a year that we're spending throughout the world on all the cars in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the cost of ride sharing today, it's about 2 to $3 a mile versus a robo taxi, which is less than 18 cents a mile and dropping. So right. just look Currently, at that. Currently, it's 18 cents a mile, right. uh, potentially, with a Model 3 driving around autonomously. Right. Um, that would be the cost per mile. So the gross profit on a Model 3 that you were robo-taxiing would be $30,000 a year. Now, if you drove that about 90,000 miles a year um, for picking people up, that would make you about $300,000 over a 10-year period. Which would be roughly the life of the vehicle. Yeah. So that's amazing. It's insane. That's mind blowing. Right. You'd buy a $38,000 car now. Yep. And then <laughs> you, would you would just make, make money. $300,000 from that investment. So I want to point something out here. Do the math, people. Mm -hmm. Tesla only needs us for the next few years to buy its cars. And then Tesla is going to shut off the spigot and say, no, we don't need you to buy cars anymore. We are the provider of the whole service. Think about that, yeah, what right. I just said. That could be crazy. I don't think you'll be able to buy a Tesla. I don't know how many exact years from now, two, three, four, but in some number of years, Tesla won't need us anymore. They'll make more money producing the car and putting it on their network than they will from us buying it. So I think that's what Elon was saying today during this was he was basically saying, you, you'd be kind of crazy not to buy a Model 3. Right now. Right now, because you'd be investing in something that'll make you money. As right. soon as I turn on this robo network, boom, you're you're making money. You can make money, it, well, if you want to. If you want to, right. or you can keep it and just drive it yourself. Right, and, and, you know, put the million miles on it yourself. Right. Which is, hey, that's still way better than most cars. You know, you would not get a million miles out of most cars. Right. This is insane, and, and you know, you would be an idiot to not buy a Model 3, yeah. to not buy a Tesla, because... Um, as Elon said, uh, you know, if you were to not buy a Tesla, it's essentially like buying a horse. Right. And I think that's one of the main things that, that Elon wanted from this was to make everyone realize that it's time to buy a Model 3. Right. I think he wanted to increase. This is a, a lever he could pull to get people to go, oh, wow, I should buy a Model 3 and I should do it now.
and it and it's like it's not like a fake demand lever pull. No. Like this is a true like yeah uh yeah uh yeah he you even, should buy it. He even openly said the customers are fronting us the money for the cars. I mean, he just basically admitted that he's creating something that's never been created before. This isn't a normal car that loses value. This is something. This is an investment that makes you money. It's almost like you're buying a share in a taxi company or something. Right. Like, you know, yeah, you're buying, buying a taxi medallion. Right. You're buying a taxi service without like all of the hassle. You don't have to do any work. Right. Normally you buy a taxi and you have to go drive the taxi. Right. Or you have to hire someone to right. drive the taxi and then you have to make sure that they yeah. do it and you know, oh my gosh. So some questions came up. I thought they were pretty good ones. Galley was there from Hyperchange. He asked a question about the Robo Snake. He said, like, is there gonna be some way to charge us autonomously? And mm-hmm. Elon was like, That's easy. Don't yeah. worry about that. Yeah. We're gonna of course. Robo Snake, done. Right. And then Galley asked about uh, the conservative pricing that Elon had given with Uber and Lyft. And and Elon's like, Yeah, we just kind of pick some numbers out of our hat. They're probably very conservative. And they are conservative. Right. And Elon went on to talk about how big auto is really slow to adapt and he again brought up the 2012 model s is a car that has not been beaten in terms of what it can do in right. terms of uh range and supercharging and acceleration and basically all of the safety you know, s- safety and seating uh, hasn't been beat by any other car manufacturer in seven years they've had seven years to make a model s right. killer and they've never done it. They nope. haven't done it. We are just now seeing the Audi with the, with their e-tron um, and Jaguar with the I-Pace. I mean... Well, and as Elon pointed out, manufacturing is super hard. And he used Audi as an example. Mm-hmm. He said, look, at they're good at making cars. They've been doing it for years. Right. And they, they can't produce the e-tron. Right. And they're very slow to adapt. So, I mean, you know, if they're just coming out with their Model S killer now... You know, their 2012 Model S killer right now. Imagine how far back they're going to be when we're talking about this full autonomy stuff. Now, the question came up about cash flow. And Elon basically said, we're going to try and stay cash flow neutral during this buildup stage because we want to put every last dollar into building this out. And this is kind of a crazy statement because what he wants to do is make as many cars as possible in in the next few years yep. sell them to consumers or uh, lease them out i think leasing is going to make tesla the most money in the long run and just put as many of them on the road as they can because one day he's going to go and boom all of them are going to be self-driving cars another thing that many people don't talk about is that as of three years ago, Tesla put a little clause into their uh, agreement when you buy the car that you cannot run this car on any other network other than the Tesla network. Right. So you cannot Uber this car. You cannot lift this car. You can only use it on the Tesla network. So you can rent out the car if you want. Like you can do a rental service. Like Turo. Right. But you cannot put it on an Uber-like service right. other than Tesla network. So many people didn't think about that at the time because they're like, I don't even know what he's talking about. Right. So fine. But that means that every Tesla, basically, that can be put on an Uber service can't be put on. Right. And Uber is screwed in that regard because, I mean, honestly, though, like when you get in an Uber, what is the worst part about the Uber ride? It's the driver. Right. It's either because they're bad at driving or they smell bad or they want to talk to you or they chose the wrong kind of music. Imagine if you got in an Uber and there was no driver and you didn't have to worry about that. You could just be like... Oh, I'm in a car and, by myself. I can sing. I and, can talk. And, I can talk to other people. And the talk. car that you're in is safe. Right. And it's right. It's driving itself using a neural net, which is way better trained than yes. your average Uber driver. Now, one good question came out. Okay, Elon, fine. You got your robo taxi network, but it can't possibly handle all situations. Like what if the car gets pulled over by a police officer? And Elon was like, oh, that's no big deal. We'll have a phone home you know, option. Well, he actually said that it would be able to handle getting pulled over. Right. But Um, I mean, if it got in a situation it couldn't handle, mm -hmm. it would phone home to Tesla and a human would take over. Right. It'd be kind of a fun job. Yeah. Virtual driver. It'd be neat. And, you know, it's just one... uh, another way that this can be solved. He said that basically they're going to be capping the steering wheel at some point, probably in the next couple of years. um, And the probability of steering wheel going away, 100%. Right, because people, as soon as they realize that these cars are going to drive safer than human-driven cars, he related this to elevators. Elevators used to be man-operated. You'd have a a guy in there with a big lever, and it would go up and down. They weren't perfect, and if they did something wrong, they would cut you in half. Right. And so 
as soon as they had the technology to be able to basically move you from floor to floor safely without chopping you in half, and there's, I mean, elevator travel is the safest form of travel in the world per mile. Right. Right. Why would you go back to having a human operator? You'd be like, no way. And right. so the exact same thing is going to happen with drivers. As soon as we realize like, you know what, you know, all these thousands and thousands of people that die on the roads because people are drunk or they're texting or they're just terrible drivers. Why would we go back to the dumb monkey driver? Right. I mean, he said it's like driving a two ton death machine. Right. And he said consumers will demand to outlaw regular cars. Right. There was a question about battery supply limitation. And they're like, well, aren't you limited by batteries and he's like yeah that's probably our only limiting factor and he said in fact we're going to now start pushing the standard range plus over the long range car he said because then we can make about a third more cars this is really interesting because for the longest time tesla has been forced to push out the most expensive car getting the most profit margin out of each car um, because this was their only way that they could make money was by selling you a car and you buying it. Um, now, they just want to have as many cars out on the road as possible. So right. they want you to buy or lease a standard range plus because it has fewer cells in it, which means that they can take the cells that would have gone in the long range, right? But now you bought the standard range plus and they get to put it in another standard range plus, which means that they get to make a third more cars. Question came up about um, full self-driving and whether more and more people are going to be buying it. And Elon said, we're going to be ramping up massively after today. Mm -hmm. And I kind of believe it. As the word gets out about what he's doing, I think people will be silly not to want to get full self-driving. I mean, there are so many cool things you can do with a full self-driving car. I mean, just being able to summon the car to you yep. at any point i mean we had to when we came back from europe we had to worry about this exact thing we needed to get back from the airport and there was tons of baggage and stuff and we just needed the car to get to us right. with no one in it so we would have enough room right. to get all the stuff home and so we could have just summoned the car and exactly. it could have come to us instead of you know you having to get an uber to pick up the car to drive it to us as Elon said, it'll be financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. He said it'd be like owning a horse in three years. I mean, it'd be like buying a horse in like 1918. Right. You know, it'd be like, oh, this will be good. I'm going to get a horse. Excellent. Let's talk about something else that didn't make any sense until now. Mm -hmm. The Tesla pickup truck. Right. I mean, we had this weird image of this rectangle. Um, and it was like, how can this be a pickup truck like Tesla? You know, pickup trucks, you've got to have this big cab and you're honk, honk. And you don't need the cab. No. The cab is for a driver. This could be what? it. If they're just going to put the pickup truck directly on the be network. Explain this to me, okay? Explain yep. it to our viewers. What do you need a pickup truck for? You need the pickup truck to move stuff. That's the whole point. That Why it, have this bed if you don't need to move stuff? Right. So you just need an autonomous bed. Right. The bed of a pickup. So Tesla pickup truck can just be a bed yes. of a pickup truck that makes total sense because it doesn't behoove you to have a bed attached to a cab right because the cab is not efficient for moving around no, you just want it to show up at home depot pick up some lumber and drive it to your house right you don't need to be in it right so i mean you don't even need to own it no you could just have it be on the network you don't want to own it right oh i need to move a couch instead of you know bothering your friend greg to borrow his pickup truck hey greg Oh, I need to move a couch, man. And he's like, oh, my God, why did I buy a pickup truck? Now you just right. go on the Tesla thing and be like, I need a pickup truck. And it'll say, okay, here is a pickup truck. Yep. It picks up stuff. Another question came up about regulatory approval because everyone's like, well, wh why would the government mm -hmm. allow this? And Elon said again, regulatory bodies are convinced by data. Mm -hmm. If it's safer, cheaper then they're going to say, of course, yes, let's do it. Right. And that's what everyone's going to demand. Mm -hmm. So Elon's been so focused on high level stuff like this, okay, this just mind blowing uh, master plan stuff that it totally makes sense to me now why things like deliveries have not been on his mind. Right. Because ultimately, he's not going to be delivering cars to people anymore. In a few years, he's not going to, we're not going to be the consumer of the car. Right. When the Model S came out, right, Tesla was very good at customer service. There were very few customers. They right. were able to, you know, make sure that everything went smoothly for them. Um, and that's true of the X as well. But, you know, no longer are we the customers. Not soon. Soon we won't be. Soon. We're the bank. Right. We're, we're just, we're just buying these cars, which Tesla is going to, 
use. You don't need to give customer service to a bank. Banks right. invest because they know that it's money they're going to be making right. off something. And uh, for anyone who has a Tesla right now, you're probably going to be making money yeah. on your car yeah. that you bought using money. You're, it's an investment. Yeah. It's super, super exciting. If this wasn't a reason to buy stock in them now, I don't know what is. I know. Or to buy a Model... If you were like on the fence about buying a Model 3 or like a Leaf, um, this is one reason that you'd be an idiot to buy the Leaf. I'm now, sorry. And you might be saying like, well, I can't see this happening in my lifetime or in the next 40 years or whatever. We're talking about something that's it's going exponentially. They're figuring out these problems. They've already figured out the hardware. Mm -hmm. So now all that's left is the software, and the software is getting better all the time. And, and I mean, and they have it basically down. I mean, if they're going to be feature complete this year, which I believe that they're going to be, yeah. um, then I think that they're going to be adding just a couple more nines in the in the years to come. And I want to hear from Galley and others who got to take these test rides, mm -hmm. like what their experience was, because they are going to have experienced things that we have not yet. They right. got to use the developer mode and go through, um, you know, on surface streets, through intersections, red lights, all that kind of stuff. So I am really interested to hear what their what their experience was. Right. This was mind blowing. Thank you wow. so much for yeah. coming along for the ride. This is such a small blip on the radar in terms of everything because i mean uh, the people in the room were asking pretty pretty poor questions in my there's opinion some good ones, but there were some, some good ones but, but some... there were some pretty like yeah i would say boneheaded questions yeah. um being asked and these are people sitting in the room people actually hearing this stuff Th this, this is like when amazon started becoming a thing and people are like it's a bookstore just picture back you were probably alive when amazon was starting as a online bookseller mm -hmm. Did you ever picture the day when they would run a um, entertainment network? Right. Amazon Prime. Right. Kind of or stuff, when they right. would run an AWS, um, you know, an a, a online cloud data service, right. like the largest one in the world. Like, right. you're like, wait, but they're a bookseller. Right. It, yeah. It, this is, and, this and is and how Tesla it has always sort of been more than just a car company. Yeah. You know, they've, you know, done solar and battery projects. Um, and we've always been talking about that. But now they are going to be like, a better version of Uber, and it's just going to be insane. It really is. Um, so, if, if you need help understanding the autonomous driving future, we did a ten-part series on it. Everyone kind of thought maybe we we're crazy, um, but if this turns out to be true, then we're it, not crazy. Ha! <laughs> take that. <laughs> take and that. you should really watch it. I mean, watch it because you know there are a lot of implications that go into having a fully autonomous yeah. uh, future. Um, and we talk about a lot of the points there, a lot of really exciting, positive stuff. I know. I'm really um, excited about our So, future. I mean, if you're kind of like on the fence about like, I don't know if I like this future. There's money to be made here, people. Uh, stock or the car. Uh, two great ways. It's true. So, I mean, just, and there's other other avenues of yeah. of things you can Start do. Start yeah. wrapping your mind around it's it, folks. Be exciting. This is exciting. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We'll talk to you next week. Now you know.